Hi, my name is Glenn Hasselman. I'm just making this video for the free accounting software users to show you guys how to upgrade your file for Single Touch Parallel 2. So unlike previous updates I've published where all you needed to do was download and install the software, in this case there is a few things to tweak in the file um, for Single Touch Parallel 2. Okay, so I've just opened up this file um, and it, and I've um, um, processed a couple parallels through this file using single touch parallel one, in fact, using the previous version of the software. So um, the first thing I want to do is do a backup of this file. Now, you know, it, it would be sensible to um, back up the file even before installing the new version, and you could back it up in the old version of the software as well. So anyway, I'm just going to click on F and then save backup file and um, I'll just put it on the desktop and call it um, Alright, so having saved um, the backup, it actually gives you a informative message here and tells you that if you haven't um, um, you also need to have a backup of your FAS identity file. So if you Back up your business file, but you don't because of security. If you don't back up your FAS identity file, you won't be able to get into that um, backup. Um, so um, you can also click on the F and click up and click backup um, FAS identity file. Um, I'm actually not going to do that now. I know I've got a backup of this FAS identity file already, um, and the main reason of for doing this backup here is that um, if I change something in this file like or if, when you, you set up the new accounts for single touch parallel 2 if um, um, things don't work and you just want to go back to what you had before you can always open the previous um, the, the backup copy and just use that to get back to where you were okay so um, now the first thing I want to mention about this update is that um, in this new version of the software you can actually just um, continue using single touch power one um, so I mentioned that because you know you might not you might see the rest of this video and you might think no I don't want to do that right now I'll do that in a couple of weeks when I have a bit of time or you might even do it in the next financial year so finishing off this financial year in single touch power one and then um, starting it in the new financial year so to do that all you need to do um, is um, when you do your payroll click new batch um, and on this page you'll notice that um, there's this type and it's single touch parallel 2 all you have to do is change that type to blank and then it will um, use single touch parallel 1 so I'm just going to enter these dates but let me just go back and see where uh, the last pay run left off and it was to the 5th of June so I'll go new batch um, start it from the 6th of June go for a week alright and as I said change the STP2 to blank and and this is a new field um, previously we didn't have a type um, single touch parallel type but now there's two types so um, having done that um, save the batch and that sets up the batch um, go to transactions and this is just exactly as you would normally do it put in some normal time um, you can scroll down and have a look and you can see this pay event info uh, which is what gets sent to the ATO just review it and make sure it is um, exactly correct um, click save um, then you can go to your STP Lodge page um,
select your machine credential and then click lodge so it says it's sent so first thing when you lodge it it goes to sent status and the software is going to check in 68 seconds to see um, if the ATO has processed it okay so that's um, that's all there is to it if you just want to continue with single touch peril one for a little while um, the next thing I want to show you um, is how to upgrade to single touch peril two so when you're ready you can do this upgrade um, and I'll just create a new batch for our single touch parallel 2 lodgement um, okay and in this case I'm going to leave um, the type as STP2 I'll just go to transactions and click new pay slip and put in the normal time again okay now I won't save this pay slip but I just want to point out a few things so um, if we scroll down here to the pay event info um, you'll see that there is a few slightly different things um, there is this tax treatment code um, there's a cessation type code if the employee's um, finished work. Um, <clears throat> tax offset claim, I think that's new. Um, and under here, under this salaries and wages heading, um, there are a few extra fields. So there's overtime, bonuses and commission, director's fees. Um, and these are some new things that are to be reported through um, single touch peril. So previously we had overtime as an example reported under gross. Now that's to be separate. Um, so if you if you don't pay overtime, well lucky you, but if you do pay overtime then um, um, then you might you're gonna have to change your setup and make sure that you report that correctly. Another thing that's changed that's gonna affect some people is salary sacrifice. Um, which is also getting reported separately and split out um, from the gross amount as well and I'll do a separate video on that in fact I'll do a separate video on the overtime as well rather than try to explain that too much in this video okay so what one thing to note here is that if you have a very simple um, if you don't have overtime salary sacrifices price and those kinds of things this will actually just produce the correct figures and you could save this and you could go and lodge it however I recommend not doing that um, first you need to you should do these upgrades that I'm going to um, explain to you um, so I won't save that and I'll show you what I'm talking about so go back to the business menu um, and click on tax codes so the tax codes are the things that really control how things get reported through um, single touch payroll or even things like business activity statements and superannuation or taxable claims selling reports and things like that. Um, so um, some of the setup uh, needs to change on them. So let's ha and there's a few payroll ones. A lot of it's just GST, but you know there's car allowance. Um, gross taxable pay, pay as you go withheld, and the two super ones. So let's just have a look at the gross taxable pay. So we go into there um, under and focus on the single touch payroll classifications. There's a couple new fields here. Um, one is the income type, okay, and you can see that that's blank. Um, this uh, second one is more called STP type. It says old was used for STP1 so yeah that's an old field and that that'll be removed uh, probably in the next year or so when we remove support for single touch power parallel one 
Um, there is a classification for the um, gross amount on the pa on each payslip line, um, or just you might think of it as just the amount on each payslip line. Um, but there is a secondary amount on the payslip line called a provision or tax amount, and there's a classification for that. That's not new. <coughs> um, and then there's two new th fields here: country and SDP additional information. And um, you know, most people will never need to worry about these things, uh, most of our users anyway. Um, but um, I'll do additional videos when for things where they might come up. Um, okay, so now you'll be glad to know that you don't. I, I'm not going to just explain to you what needs to change and then you have to go and change it all. I've got something that's a bit easier for you. Um, so if we go back to the uh, business menu and click on this option here which says upgrade data for STP2, um, there is a few actions that um, need to be done to upgrade the file. Um, and that just relates to the chart of accounts, the, the setup of the accounts and the tax codes. Um, so it's not many, there's only six things there and um, to, to, to do it all you need to do is click apply all upgrades okay and then it comes back as complete on all of them if you've changed your ledger around a bit um, and you might be using one of these tax codes for um, uh, for some other purpose other than what it was originally planned for um, you, you might get an error and you'd have to look into that more closely. But anyway, um, for most people, that's all you'll need to do. Um, going back to the tax codes page, let's have a look. Um, there are a couple extra ones. So there is overtime and salary sacrifice for additional super, which, um, as I mentioned, they get reported separately now, so they need their own tax code. Um, but let's go and have a look at this gross taxable wages one. So we can see that it's now put in that it is income type salaries and wages. Um, it's left that individual non-business there, which was the single touch payroll thing, single touch payroll one um, setting. Um, the uh, gross classification is just now called gross. So it was previously um, this one here, individual non-business underscore gross. Um, so I guess it's kind of a like, little bit like this field is being split out into two different fields. So it was uh, individual non-business gross. Now it's just gross and this uh, income type here kind of takes care of it um, being individual non-business. Um, so a bit of a change to the setup there. Um, and I'll show you one of the other ones. So for example, another one, overtime, um, salaries and wages, again, um, gross classification is overtime. Uh, and, and that's because overtime is being reported separately. Um, I should also mention while I'm here, actually, that um, the vast majority of everything is just gonna be salaries and wages. Uh, but there are other classifications there. So if, for example, working holiday maker and one that I think um, a lot of people are going to need to use is uh, the salaries and wages dash eligible for closely held pay concession. So that's where you've got um, um, like a shareholder in the company or a director of the company um, um, being, yeah, being paid um, salary. Uh, there's some concessions like uh, the pay-as-you-go payment summary can be lodged later and that kind of thing. So uh, a lot of our users are going to want to use that and I'll do a separate video on on how to use that one. Okay, um, now uh, just we're just looking at overtime so I just want to show you the account where that gets picked up on and if we go to the accounts um, go to time and a half 
you've got a time and a half account and a double time account in the default chart of accounts, you might have made some of your own overtime accounts as well. And if that's the case, you need to um, flag this default tax code on those ones. So here we've got time and a half and the default tax code is set to overtime. That would have previously been gross taxable pay. Uh, anyway, I'll do a um, I'll do a separate video on overtime. I just want to point out that uh, that that upgrade process does um, change some of these accounts as well. Okay, having um, updated the chart of accounts and the tax codes, um, we can go back to the um, to the pay runs um, or batches and um, just noting here that the one we the single touch payroll one um, batch that we lodged has come back as lodge complete um, and just going into this batch here um, clicking into the batch edit page to show you that it is a single touch payroll 2 batch um, let's go and add a new pay slip Okay, so now we've got the single touch parallel two um, classifications down here, and look, it's um, it's probably not going to be much different uh, for the most for most users who are not paying overtime or salary sacrifice and that kind of thing. Um, as I said, I'll do a, a separate video on the overtime and the salary sacrifice. So that's what that's it I guess and then you just click save um, go to the single touch power lodge page you'll see this sort of orange message at the top and it's now got a um, thing where we can renew the machine credentials so um, that's good I think a lot of people's machine credentials expired which was a little bit of a pain anyway um, you would normally review this information, um, checking your um, gross and pay as you go with help. There are two extra fields here, child support, garnishing, child support deduction, and those are new fields. Um, and I'll do a separate video on that. Now, to lodge, it's the same process. You just select your machine credential and type in your password. Okay, so um, it goes ahead and does the lodge, and it's going to take you know a little bit of time to um, to go and um, uh, to well, it's going to allow a bit of time for the ATO to process it, and then it's going to check every minute or or so um, to see if there's an update. Anyway, um, that's all there is to it. Um, there are going to be more videos and um, I'll put a bit more information on the page with this video on it um, to help you guys with STP2. Hope the video has been useful and thanks for watching.